Dirty Deeds Done Dirt Cheap D4C, or Dirty Deeds Done Dirt Cheap, is one of the most iconic stands in the JoJo franchise. This is due to many reasons, including its iconic and recognizable bunny-like design, which makes it stand out from the sea of other stands, no pun intended. However, by far its most memorable trait is its stand ability. D4C's ability is dimensional travel. With Valentine is caught between two objects, he can use that as a gateway to another parallel world. In his fight with Lucy Steel, Valentine caught himself between a chair on the ground and traveled to another dimension. Another example is lodging himself between a doorway and a wall. Any object he can think of can be used, as long as he's caught between them, such as sheets in the ground, liquids like water, and even tiny particles of dust. The dimensional hopping is mostly used to avoid attacks, as Valentine can easily use his ability to escape certain situations, and because there's plenty of things for him to be caught between, it's extremely difficult to kill him. Valentine isn't the only one who can dimensionally travel. If he catches an opponent between objects, he can make them travel to another dimension instead, giving them no way to return. So what does Valentine do in these dimensions he travels to? Well, since each is pretty much parallel to our own, he's able to interact with his alternate universe selves. These versions of him are pretty much identical in every way, and Valentine can bring them to his home dimension to help him in combat and certain jobs, pretty much giving him an unlimited supply of cannon fodder for opponents to deal with. If he somehow damaged Valentine to a fatal extent, he can transfer a stand to one of his alternate selves. They'll inherit the will and memories of the previous Valentine and will seek out the same goal overall. Valentine can do this as long as he's still alive in some way. So not only is it hard to kill Valentine, but killing him only results in another fully healed Valentine to take their place. This is the commonly used explanation on how D4C's ability works. It's simple, easy to understand, and is a worthy enough ability to give our heroes trouble. However, as you all know, D4C's ability was very different in his initial appearance, as the author himself described it as allowing neighboring worlds to exist simultaneously in the same location. This can be seen in the iconic and mind-bending Who Shot Johnny Joestar sequence, where readers are left scratching their heads on what was even going on as the culprit of this event was changing constantly. This sequence was so confusing in fact that Rocky himself quickly changed the stand's ability within only a chapter or two of his ability being showcased. Araki has a tendency to do this. He'll introduce a stand ability, it shows itself to be incredibly OP, and then Araki immediately changes it or simplifies it. But with that said, how exactly did D4C's original ability even work, and one in particular made Araki scrap it? Now I'm not exactly an expert on analyzing this type of stuff, and there are better videos out there dissecting this sequence. But still, I want to give my two cents on what's going on. There isn't a particular word for this, but I think Valentine is using the infinite outcome or choice nature of parallel worlds. What do I mean by this? Well, imagine there's a fresh plate of uh, cactus on a table, and it looks absolutely tasty. However, they aren't for you, but one of your siblings. Let's say your brother. And let's say they really, really don't want you to have it. Now you have two possible choices, eat the cactus and face the consequences, or walk away and potentially regret never being able to try it. We'll be logical and say you ate the cactus. Now there's two possible things that can occur. Either your brother beats you into unconsciousness, or your mouth starts bleeding all over because cactuses aren't meant for human consumption. Regardless of the decision you make, there's always an outcome, and there's always the question of what would happen if you made a different choice. That's where parallel worlds come in. In a world where you ate the cactus, there's a world where you didn't eat it. But there's also a world where you ate it, but your brother wasn't in the same room, and he never saw you eat it. But then there's a world where you managed to eat it, but then escaped his beating. A world where the cactus belonged to you, and your brother decided to eat it instead. You get the idea. For every decision, there's a world where there's a different outcome, and thinking about it from this perspective, the Who Shot Johnny Jewel Star sequence starts to make a bit more sense. Let me lay it out for you. Funny Valentine sees Johnny, travels into another world, and positions himself where his universe Johnny will be. He shoots Johnny in the face, and that's when his ability truly activates. Now that he's shot Johnny, an infinite amount of parallel worlds come into existence, each with the final outcome of Johnny getting shot. But the difference? Instead of Valentine shooting Johnny, what if it was Diego? What if it was Rocket Peepo? The artist was the one who witnessed the murder attempt. Well, what if it was actually the two twins, or the group of kids? 
This one action caused a chain reaction of multiple worlds Valentine could draw from to use to his advantage. He could easily now confuse his enemies with events that may or may not be happening. You might be wondering how all of this is somehow happening at the same time. Well, they technically aren't. Not to everyone at least. You see, what I believe Valentine did was forcefully implant the memories of parallel worlds into the minds of the observers. That way each of them see different events. Maybe memories isn't the right word, it's more like they are seeing the events of the parallel worlds take place in real time, but only they can see it, while others are viewing the events of another world. It's not just that they are seeing into the worlds themselves, but the individuals within the worlds can see them as well, and even interact with them. Like maybe this is a world world where Waka Pipo is hunting Diego for whatever reason. This process starts and stops almost instantly with no visual cues, so to an outside observer, it looks like it all happened in real time. Now this explanation is imperfect, and honestly, it most likely isn't correct either, but I think there are elements of this Araki was trying to go for. Now why did he scrap it? Well, it was likely because he couldn't think of any cool stand battles with his ability. The original power itself was confusing, sure, but it was still incredibly interesting in the way it was used. But let's be honest, it's basically the ability to create illusions on a bit of steroids. It doesn't really scream unstoppable stand ability that heroes have to try their hardest to overcome. The stand ability works best in something like a mystery series or a whodunit, where he foresees power would allow him to manipulate clues and even a narrative told by witnesses. In a battle series, how exactly would this work to make fights interesting? The answer is not much, obviously. It fits more in line with a secondary villain who the protagonist encounter under journey like La Squadra or Dio's Cult. The ability is definitely formidable, but it's nothing the Jojo protagonist couldn't overcome like Made in Heaven, King Crimson, and the world. The new iteration of D4C's ability fits the idea of an unstoppable ability. Not only can Valentine fight his foes with infinite versions of himself, but simply bringing an alternate version of his opponents will be enough to one-shot them. So yeah, this is at least my interpretation why D4C's confusing yet intriguing original ability was scrapped.